much and uh, I don't know if you can tell but I'm so sick right now so um, as soon as I got back to China it was just like from the get-go like I did not have any rest um, I actually missed my registration day because I just couldn't be bothered going so the very next day when I arrived I had to go back to school and then they had a massive shocker for us so they got in an American teacher who was going to do like an immersive intense two-week workshop because we're putting on the production West Side Story now usually we don't um, put on any productions until we're in third year and fourth year but because the now fourth years have left the school. The oldest class is my class, so we're second semester, second year right now because of the seasons are opposite to Australia. So we go with the American's timetable. But um, anyway, so as soon as we got back, it was two weeks, no weekends, like I'm not even joking, like 14 days in a row, 8 a.m. every morning, even on Saturday, Sundays, until 9.30 p.m. And it was dancing. It wasn't even singing or acting. It was like 100% dancing and if you've ever done West Side Story, if you've seen West Side Story, there's so many like jumping things around and like it's just so much cardio and so much work like I've never sweated so much in my life like every day after class I felt like I came out of a sauna and you were just so sore because our bodies were so not used to moving so much like usually our dance class is just ballet and like we sit there for half the time and it's three hours three times a week but this was like 10 hours every single day and when we got up in the morning I literally had to like pull myself off my bed like it just hurt so much but um I got I think I got the role of anybody's in the show so that's what's happened with me and um, because she's kind of like trying to get into the gang with like the Jets so she's kind of like a tomboy so she has to do all the boys dancing as well so it's just a lot of jumping around and throwing yourself across the floor so extra hard work but um, I'm glad to say that my dancing has improved heaps and also my translation skills I mean like we did have two translation teachers but because they know that I can speak English they just never came and then I also had to send the American teacher back to the airport and take him out and it was just like where was my free time at like it was so stressful with radio because I now record everything from home and then <clears throat> sorry and then I had to email to them and like sometimes I just wouldn't have time like if I only had a half an hour break for lunch and I was like I don't have time to go home and record everything and edit everything and send it to them so it's just been really stressful and like today's Friday so yesterday no the day before yesterday Wednesday I sent the American teacher to the airport and like I'm sorry but it was like a breath of fresh air like finally some normalcy in my life like now I can go along with the school timetable and I can go to work when I need to go to work so um, I have a lot more to talk about but I'll talk about it at the end of this video because it's all work related and it has something to do with like the sort of quote and the feel of this month. So let's start off with beauty. Now if you're my friend you know that I have terrible issues with baby hairs and you can tell like if in my usual videos my baby hairs are kind of like this and that's after me like pinning them down and putting on heaps of hairspray. They're just like I don't even know what happened. It started in like 2013 and just never gone back. Like they're so bad that to the point my makeup artist actually shaved some of my baby hairs off here and now they're just growing back and like I'm like bold here as well. Like anyway, it's just really annoying. So when I was getting my makeup done for an event, one of the makeup artists was like, I just got this new thing from Japan. It's called the Mato Mage, Mato Mage Hair Styling Stick and it's from Utena. So what it is, it's just like a glob of like a thick, hard sort of wax glob and you just kind of smooth it. I'll show you what, you just go like that and you don't want to put too much on, like it's actually quite strong. Like this, the pink version is the less strong version if you want like the intense hardcore, the green version. This was so cheap, I just got it off like Chinese eBay because like ain't nobody got time to go to Japan and get people to bring it back for you. But yeah, it's been a lifesaver, like honestly... Obviously you have to wash your hair after using this because your hair literally just gets stuck into one place But nothing can tame my baby hairs like this so nobody can call me Wi-Fi anymore um, Hopefully by summertime these baby hairs will grow out and now I can do like the slick ponytail and everything So like I don't just look like I have like a lion's mane on my head so just <laughs> Guys if you have baby hair problems like me just get this it's amazing I mean some baby hairs still stand out because they're a bit too short like some of them just glue all together like instead of like five being like this they'll just come back as like two and like resurrect themselves but you know it's a lot better than having 50 billion I've got another hair product 
dry shampoo. Uh, pretty sure everyone's have used these before. These are Batiste. I used to hate dry shampoo because my hair doesn't really get oily and I usually wash it like every third day. Some people might think it's gross but I, like literally my hair doesn't get oily. But it's just annoying when I just wash my hair and like I have to go to the gym and then it's like sweaty or like I get my hair done. It's all hairspray and like I don't want to wash it again the same day or the very next day. So usually I just spritz this through. And I love the smell of these two. This one is the Coconut and Exotic Tropical. This one I stole from my friend. It's the Ella Henry in one and it smells really nice it's like really musky and sweet and soft so I kind of just spritz it through it does leave a bit of like white residue but you just kind of like massage it in it does make your hair feel heavier which is good in a way because you know how when you just wash your hair and you try to like style it it's basically impossible because your hair is just so slippery and stiff so oh excuse me I just had breakfast um once I put this in, after I like blow dry my hair or something and I put it in, it's so much easier to style because it's got a lot more grip. So I actually use this more to style my hair than to keep it clean. The next one is for your face. Um, I had awesome skin when I was in Australia and literally the next day when I arrived back in Shanghai, I started getting pimples. Like my skin was just dying. I, for one period of time, I had like five pimples on my chin here and it just looked like a massive volcano and it was just horrible so I've had really really irritated skin I keep getting like allergic reactions and stuff as well I think it's just because it's springtime I haven't really been using any products on my face and usually during the daytime besides my treatment essence I'll just spray this this is I don't know how to pronounce it Caudalie it's from it's the Paris one and this is the grape water so it's kind of like the event um, thermal spring water spray but this one just has grape water in it and apparently it soothes and moisturizes and this one is for sensitive skin this is actually from my ex-roommate's girlfriend like she came from back from Paris and she gave it to me it was super nice and it does smell a little bit grapey like I can't smell anything right now but the event one smells like nothing but this one does have a sort of like tangy smell to it but I do like the feeling of this one more to the event because this one actually feels like it's like there's something on my face besides just water spritzed Okay, so this one is for your well-being. This one was actually a gift for my friend Joan. It's called This Works, the company, and it's the Deep Sleep Pillow Spray. This has been saving my sleep. Like, um, my friend Joan knows that I have a lot of trouble sleeping. Like, usually, I'll always wake up, you know, two to three times during the night, and I'll stress myself awake sometimes. Like, I think I'm missing out on something, or I forgot something. Like, sometimes in the middle of the night, I'll just wake up and be like, oh no, I didn't put my diary in my bag, and I have to get up and put it in, and then I can go to sleep. And at night, I have so much trouble sleeping as well. Like, if I don't tire myself out completely, and conk out within 15 minutes, then if I try to go to bed when I'm actually tired, I'll roll around for like an hour before I can actually sleep. So this one is all like kind of herby smells. It's a very strong herbal smell. Like it has lavender, veti, vert and wild chamomile. And what you do, you just spray it onto your pillow like that before you sleep. I spray it once. A lot of people spray it like three to four times. But the smell is a bit too strong. And it makes your pillow really wet. And it's just like, I feel like I cried all of my pillow or something. So I just spray it once and it works. Like... I've been having whole night sleeps and I use this on the plane as well and I had like a good two hours solid sleep like on the plane it's always like 10 minutes here 20 minutes there and the only weird thing about this it's been making me wake up really early like even if I sleep at 12 if I spray this I'll kind of be awake by 6 but then obviously I'll go back to sleep if I don't have anything but yeah every time I use this I tend to wake up really early like this morning I woke up at 5 30 but that's probably because I'm sick but this stuff is amazing they also have like a balm that you can put onto your like wrist here as well so you can like put it onto your temples and it helps you sleep better it's a UK brand um and my friend got it from Mecca Cosmetic Cosmetica Mecca Cosmetica Mecca Cosmetics anyway um you can get it online as well it's a bit pricey but if you have trouble sleeping it is so worth it and if you travel a lot and obviously with jet lag and the plane having struggles sleeping this is a lifesaver so thank you so much Joan on to the edibles and food so this month I've literally just been going crazy over like birch muesli and granola and carmen's is amazing you know how expensive this stuff is here it's like almost 200 rmb for a box which is like 40 dollars australian so anyway when i went back to australia i bought heaps i got the birch muesli and i got the deluxe gluten-free muesli i'm not gluten-free but this one just looked nice i mean it's got succulent fruit and a blend of honey roasted nuts seeds and cinnamon and when you open it it smells kind of chocolatey and it's just really nice. This one's kind of like rice puffs as well, so it's a bit like puffy. This is what I've been eating every single day since I come back. Like, rain, hail or shine, no matter 
what I'm feeling, I always eat this at least once every day. Sometimes I eat this twice every day. Almond milk, either Carmen's Birch Muesli or that gluten-free deluxe muesli. Strawberries, always. One of those mini pears, a banana, and then chia seeds, and then honey or coconut sugar. I eat it every single day. It just makes me feel so fresh. It fills me up, and it makes me just really energetic. And, like, you guys should try it out. It's just so simple. You don't need to cook anything. So, yes. Onto the clothing side of things because you do need to cover your bodies. So as I said before, like this month I've basically just been dancing every day and just wearing active wear. Like this is probably my first day wearing normal clothes. Ooh, it feels weird. So anyway, um, I already have these leggings. I might have mentioned them in a previous one, but these are the Nike Sculpt Fit Tight Leggings. And they've got like a kind of like perforated well like dotty back and then it's got like the logo there and it's just super tight and they're actually quite thick but they don't make you sweat that much like in winter if I wear this I won't be too cold whereas if I wore my other sports leggings I could feel the breeze right into my bones but what I like about these is because they're really tight they kind of cinch in like where your waist is I, I don't have a waist but obviously it like sucks in your belly so much it's super high waisted though they're just so comfy and they're very flattering like yeah, they're just very nice pants, and then I would recommend these to you. Like, they're honestly such good use. Like, if I could wear... I'm one of those people who just wear leggings as, like, pants. I don't know why everyone hates leggings so much. They're just so comfortable. You can do anything in them. Like, I would sleep in these if I could. So, yeah, now I have two pairs of these, and you guys should get a pair as well. With fashion, I think I'm trying to change up my style a little bit. Like, I previously was very colourful, very florally, and very frilly, and, like, collars and stuff. But... I don't know, maybe it's because I'm getting older, I want to kind of go for like a more sophisticated look or also just because I can't be bothered. And usually I hate change over seasons and also because Shanghai rarely has autumn and spring. But this season, it, there seems to be quite a lot of springy sort of transitional temperature time. So anyway, I thought I'd get into like the dusters and the coats, which I usually never wear. I'm like a massive winter coat person. I always just wear a denim jacket or a jumper in spring and autumn, but I got these um, and I'm more into sort of neutral colours like beiges and camels, which I never wear. So this is all new to me, but I'm loving these pieces. So the first one I picked up from Australia in Sports Girl, you might have seen it in my OOTD video, and it's just like an anorak and it's very lightweight, so I could wear this in Australia in summer, just at night when it cools down. And that's what it looks like. It's kind of like trenchy where it's got that. And it's got the clip-on buttons. But I like it better without the buttons. The sleeves can go all the way down or you can shorten it. And ugh, these are my PJ bottoms. But it goes to like the middle of your thigh. Like I would probably just chuck this over like a very casual simple outfit. So it makes you look like you're more put together and you're actually going somewhere. So I don't know, like if you had uni and then like a date or a dinner afterwards. Just chuck that on, change a pair of shoes and you're good to go. And the other one I just picked up last week from Zara, it's this cream duster and it's got like the frayed edges, like just the really sort of rugged frayed edges and it's just kind of got that like tapestry sort of feel to it and I love it, like I feel so regal and so grown up when I wear this. It makes you look so adult and so sophisticated, like, hello, don't I look heaps more mature? So it goes kind of like all the way down, a little bit below your knees, it's got pockets, that's what it looks like at the back. Do you like my banana socks? <laughs> um, every time I wore this jacket, I got so many compliments as well. And, like a lot of my teachers were all like, "Ooh, you look very nice today. Where'd you get that jacket from?" I do like to pair it with white underneath, just because I feel like it gives it a more put together look. But honestly, if you're wearing greys or like jeans underneath and a t-shirt, and you put this on, you look like you're going places. You look like you got your life together. So this is the I got my life together jacket. A movie recommendation, this is a film that I watched on the way to Australia and it's called The Room. So basically it's about this girl who was kidnapped and trapped into this tiny, tiny, tiny room and by this man and obviously she was with child and she gave birth to the child and that child had never seen the real world before, like all he knew was room. And he didn't know that there were no trees outside, there were dogs outside, like they were allowed to watch TV. And then he just thought everything in the TV was like a fantasy land, it was TV land. And he was like content in his little world because that's all he knew. And then when the kid got older, the mum decided to tell him that, you know, 
we need to get out of here this is not what real life is and it's just about how they like struggle to get out and the plan that they devise and the relationship between the really young mother and the son but what's interesting is that it also shows what happens to them after they get out because you know how a lot of movies and stories just end there when there's like a successful saving but usually when something is a success it doesn't mean that the aftermath is going to be as smooth sailing and as happy as before because if you've been trapped in a tiny tiny room with no other human com like communication besides that one man for I don't know 10 years obviously like you're gonna have social anxiety you're gonna have trouble readjusting to the real world so this movie just like, opened my eyes and it's based on a true story as well the whole time I was clenching my fist the acting was so on point the kids acting was amazing like this movie is gold I think it's in a book as well so definitely read the book I will try look up the book as well but the movie is really really good so this month's theme for me was kind of like do something that you're scared of, step outside of my comfort zone and I did two major things that were completely out of my comfort zone. I remember like when I was younger I used to really like this quote that was like um, a little fear every day is good for you, something like do something that scares you every day. So the first one was Sketches, like the shoe company, um, one of their marketing people approached me on my wave wall which is like Chinese Facebook and was like oh we should collaborate in the future and at the time I was like I don't know if you're real or you're just like joking because there's a lot of like fakes out there and then I was like yeah just shoot me an email and the email came from like an at sketches account and like it seemed legit and then they sent me some Christmas shoes and then this year they were like we actually have like a conference coming up and we would love for you to host it and I usually say no to these things like I've been asked to do um, banks and like other musical openings and stuff but because I had that one bad experience doing the press conference for the musical because the Chinese was just so hard like this I had to memorize every single word on it and the Chinese was just ridiculous and I completely messed it up and I wanted to cry on stage and like, I didn't even accept my payment because I was so ashamed that I've been turning them down ever since especially with like big companies when there's like lingo and business lingo and legalese and everything I was just like I can't do this so because the guy was so nice and like we chatted and everything and he just seemed like a good mate like I was like okay I'll try but then the lead up to it I was just so nervous all the time like he gave me the script and it wasn't too bad it was half English half Chinese but because there was a lot of like you know managing director marketing merchandising like all of that I had to say in Chinese as well I was just like I did pinging for like all the words that I didn't know and on the day I think I must have read through the script like 30 times I'm not even joking you I just sat there and read and read and read and read and like they were so nice to me they like I got decked out in sketches gear like clothes and shoes and then they were just really nice to me and accommodating they were so sweet and the bosses all like came to say hi and I got to meet the CEO of China and Hong Kong and Asia Pacific and it went really well like it was actually a huge thing there were like over 400 people there and then I think I might have like stuffed up a few words but I just put in a bit of like improv and just feeling like you kind of like joked around a little bit like this is a bit lame but when the CEO went up he had a picture of him on a magazine and he's like oh I don't look like this anymore like I look so much older now within a year and then when I went up after him I was like I think our CEO looks so much better in person than he does in photos and he was wearing this red sketches jacket so I was like red is definitely your color and he like stood up he was like oh thank you thank you and like every time I went on stage and talked like he was always like smiling at me and stuff so that was really encouraging and then when I went downstairs and sat with like the audience and everything a lot of the people would turn around and ask me like oh how long have you been working with sketches or are you like a professional host and I was like oh I do hosting at the radio and a lot of them were like oh wow like what radio I want to follow it and so a lot of people like follow KFM that day so that was an awesome feeling and then also like one of the camera crew they were like oh I listen to your show every day I'm such a fan and they wanted to take a photo of me so that was like really cool anyway it was like a good day I ha actually had fun so I'm so glad I did that another thing that I did was there's this singing show called like Supergirl or Chao Jin Yusheng in China. I'd previously never heard of it before but it's from the biggest station in China like Hunan Wei Shi and apparently the show was huge like five years ago but they're trying to revamp the version. So I got asked to audition because somebody recommended me and I didn't want to go because I just I didn't have time with school and everything I just don't really like those kind of competition things and then the lady just kept contacting me like she would not let it go so I, I ended up going didn't prepare anything had like two lines of a song and I sang and I did the splits and then I like just did some ballet moves and then a week later they were like you got through 
and they're like, you have to go to Nanjing this weekend. And I was like, I, I can't. Like, I have school every single day. Like, I can't. And then I was asking around and everyone was like, this show is actually a really, really good opportunity. So you definitely have to go. And then I ended up having to, like, you know, fake a sickie and then book a Nanjing ticket and go there. And it was such a rush, the whole thing. Like, I'll show it in my vlog. But long story short, I got through to the next round and I meant to be going Nanjing again this whole weekend. But you know when you just get a feeling about things that you just don't really like it like you just get a sort of negative vibe from it and that's what I'm feeling from it and also like I'm not sure if this is the route that I want to take not saying that I will get very far in this competition but I'm not sure if it's worth all the hassle because also if I do this competition I would have to talk to my radio bosses because it's getting aired nationwide and then it's weird because I'm on the radio as well and I'm on TV and like I think it would clash with the station but not that I've signed a contract that they can physically tell me no you're not allowed to do it because contract wise but I think it would cause some tension with my radio bosses and I do want to work at the radio for like a little still a while longer and then also like I just read the instructions yesterday and it said prepare six songs and six outfits and I don't have time and I'm so sick at the moment so I think maybe like this sickness is just a sign that I shouldn't do it I, I know it's an amazing opportunity like the reason why I kind of went was because when I was younger I always had a dream of going on an Australian Idol and like I did it I, like I still went for it I was so uncomfortable the whole time like I just really did not enjoy the entire experience so I don't think I'm gonna keep going with that and I don't think I'm gonna go to the like the rounds this weekend I got into the top 50 for that area for Nanjing area because there's no Shanghai area and this week I was meant to go from 50 to 10 so yeah so this was the result for my brief stint in the competition it's my pass card that was my number it was a weird experience but an experience nonetheless and now I know how like kind of like reality TV shows in China works and you know at least I tried at least I know I got through and I chose not to continue you know so um basically what I wanted to say is sometimes like obviously things don't work out but make sure you still try them because you'll regret it if you don't try it and like sometimes a little fear is good for you do stuff that is outside of your comfort zone so this month i challenge you to just do something that you would normally say no to but obviously if you don't feel comfortable doing like don't do it but just try something different and just step out if you're not confident if you're nervous just fake it until you make it like i'm always so nervous but fake it till you make it and people will start believing you and when people start believing you you will believe in yourself Mmm, I'm about to like die. I can't breathe through my nose right now. It's <coughs> I hope I don't have like a really bad virus or something because apparently there's a really bad one going around. So I hope to see you in my next video. I hope I'll still be alive. Let me try to do the laugh. <laughs> <sighs> You could be, you could be, you could be, you could be.